Thank you, Shantaline. Now I turn to uh, the Minister of Higher Education of the Republic of Zambia, Honorable Professor Lu. You have the floor. Thank you very much. I'll start by thanking the organizers for giving me this opportunity to share the participation of women and girls in science and technology. My country, Zambia, which is in Africa, maybe what I'll say may be similar to many other African countries, in that uh, the reasons why we have very few women and girls in science is basically due to socialization and stereotyping. When the girls are growing up, they are told to play with dolls, look pretty, and cooking pots. So they are supposed to take up the lighter uh, careers, while the boys play with cars and bigger objects because they are going to be engineers and heavy-duty uh, career progressors. Therefore, one of the things that is a big challenge for us is how we deal with this socialization. And uh, this also translates to the fact that we have a big problem of child marriages, and Zambia has put up one of the most aggressive campaigns to eliminate child marriage so that girls can be retained in schools. But even when you look at our curriculum in the schools, it is very much a very colonial type of uh, curriculum which doesn't help the situation. And also, we do not have a budgetary allocation and infrastructure that support science and technology per se. So what more when you are looking at uh, those with a lower socioeconomic status, the girls and, uh, and, and, and women? Furthermore, we do not have enough science teachers to be able to teach. And worse still, we have the media that believes in sessionalization more than reporting on, on serious issues. So these are our challenges that we have to continue dealing with. Therefore, as a country, uh, what we have done is to put up policy framework that will support the participation of girls and, and women in science. Starting from the recruitment into schools, into institutions of higher education, including universities. Even the scholarships, when they are being given out, we first of all look at whether it's 50-50, benefit the girls and men, and even much more that all the girls that have applied to take up science subjects or subjects within the technology era must all be given scholarships. We are putting up a team of career promoters and we are looking at role models in our society, in science, to be part of these career teams. I myself, as Minister of Higher Education, I'm a scientist. I'm actually a professor of microbiology and immunology. So I'm one of the good examples. And I give myself everywhere I am to, in the schools so that the girls can see me as a role model. But we have many other mod role models in the country. Recently, we actually established an Academy of Science and uh, where we expect to have a, a section dealing with women in science. And this part particular academy has been given budgetary support to be able to do these activities. So my recommendation to this forum, first of all, is to get this whole celebration, International uh, Day for Women and Girls in Science, get down to the national level so that this is celebrated worldwide, just like we celebrate 8th March, International Women's Day, because it's not known at unit level. Secondly, we need to actually have a paradigm shift, especially in the curriculum, so that the curriculum actually speaks to what we are saying in our country. We need to move away more from talking to action. And uh, we have a picture in my country where the children are touching the president's uh, mouth and saying, talk less, move to action. <laughs> Something that we'll be publishing every day in our papers. And we need to have a real revolution in our countries if we are really to achieve this whole issue of women in science. As I don't have much time, I think I'll end here. 
but just to say that uh, a lot of our countries now have put a very high premium on science, technology, and also focusing on women and girls because women are better uh, achievers. And this is a fact of life that we all have to accept. I thank you. Uh, distinguished, uh, distinguished Minister, you're well within your time limit. In fact, there's a minute and a half to spare. So I thought I'd use that time to ask you a question. Because I met the Minister of Land and Mines uh, from your country about three years ago, and he was complaining to me. He said, look, what I need are thousands of metallurgists. What I'm getting are graduates from the humanities. What can I do with graduates for the humanities, for the mining sector? And I was just wondering, over the last three years, have things changed? Are there more metallurgists now from engineering schools in Zambia? And has there been an upward trend also in the number of women engineers coming out of institutions in Zambia? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I think when you met the Minister of Mines, then I used to be Minister of uh, Gender. And I used my experience as Minister of Gender and the studies that we had done to look at uh, women's participation in the various sectors of our country to take advantage of my current portfolio, where I've been for the last two years, to change things aggressively and less talking and more action. In fact, I've been accused in the country that because I'm a scientist myself, I've gone to the ministry and taken a bias to promoting science and technology. Even furthermore, that I've been biased to, to health because of my health background. But uh, what I'm talking, um, I've been presenting here, how we are now examining how scholarships are given and ensuring that uh, we look at our needs. We have had to do a needs assessment in the country. And it is true. Zambia is very rich in uh, natural resources, including all the types of uh, precious stones, minerals, and yet we didn't have what it takes. So what was happening is we were talking about investors coming from outside Zambia. And I'm trying to create a critical mass of investors within Zambia by ensuring that we train enough geologists, metallurgists, and so on. And we also have a lot of natural resources in the form of t timber. So I'm trying to make sure that we train more people in that area so that when they see a tree, they do not see charcoal which you, you cut down a tree and get $10 for cutting down that tree in charcoal, for them to see millions of dollars by being able to produce all the value additions of a tree. So these are the changes that have taken place in the last two years. I thank you. Thank you, Minister. I think Zambia is fortunate to have a woman scientist who is the Minister for Higher Education. Thank you so much. Now,